Hi, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to enjoy life again after you've been through difficult times or even if you're still going through them and how to be sort of happy, whatever. Now, this is my weekly blog, weekly vlog, which I've just started. And today I'm filming indoors because it's very, very windy outside. So here is a little shot of the sea and then I will talk about how I have found happiness within despite many challenges in my life. Well, welcome to my channel, if this is your first time here. Um, I'm Helen Pengelly, and in my first vlog last week, I spoke about my son, who is now age 35, and has all sorts of problems with addictions and other things. And this has been going on, you know, since he was about 16. So getting on for 20 years now. Um, and a lot of people say to me, well, how do you cope, you know, with, with that? Because there were many years when he, he was living on the streets and, and I didn't see him. I had no contact with him because there was no way to contact him. And that is just one of the challenges I, I've had in my life. I have been going through some mental health difficulties, especially in the last sort of few years. And... Although, you know, I've moved on a lot, there are still days when I struggle and the last two days have been um, a couple of such days, which is why this video is being posted slightly later today because I had planned to film it yesterday, but I just wasn't in the right headspace. And I think, you know, when you're, I don't like to talk about things when I'm going through it. I want to talk about it afterwards because that's yeah um so how did i get through that how did i sort of find happiness within and one of the main things that i think for me is remembering that nothing is permanent when we're stuck in that we're stuck in challenges we're stuck in problems we can become so focused on that and that's all that that we're noticing i'm ending up in, in that um in that downward spiral so now i'm able to recognize that because i've been there before i mean last year if i was sort of like down here <laughs> like yesterday i was sort of more up here a bit and if you're familiar with trauma terminology you might have heard about like the window of tolerance and that gets wider with, with practice, with, you know, with help, with therapy. And that would be the first thing I would say, if you're struggling with your mental health, you know, do seek professional help. Don't try and do it on your own. I did that for many years. And because there's part of me, and you might relate to this, that thinking asking for help is a sign of weakness. I should be able to sort of power through this on my own. Well, we're all connected. We're all wired to support each other. So, it, it's really important to have that support network for happiness wherever you, you might find that. You might find a support group for any issues that you're facing. Like For example, as I talked about last week, I've been going to a, a drug and alcohol care, a support group now for the last 14 years because when uh, my son turned 21, I discovered he was he was on heroin and at that point it was like I can't do this anymore on my own and it's actually quite difficult sometimes to find because when you, you go in and google it there's a lot of support for the addicts but not so much for the families and I think a lot of people don't realize if they've got um, a loved one with drug and alcohol problems that they are um, classified as a carer because it, it does affect you even if they're not living with you um and because I, as i talked about in my last video i'll share the link below if you haven't seen that already um that it can it, it never goes away because even you know my son's doing a lot better than he was 
but there are still times when it can it can become too much um so how can i enjoy life when i have you know all these kind of things going on well f- one thing for me um i I've been meditating for for many, many years, which is why I'm so passionate about meditation. And I post regular guided meditations on this channel as well. Um, But I do recommend going to a group, finding a teacher and learning with them rather than trying it again. Don't try and do it on your own. When I started out, there weren't apps, there weren't um, guided meditations online. And I went along to a Buddhist meditation group and because it, it makes such a difference when you're meditating with other people and around the time that I started this that was about 19 years ago um, problems were starting with with my son and I knew there was something in me that knew that this was that this was going to help me because w- what happens is, is with meditation it It doesn't make your problems go away, but it gives you like the the capability to deal with your challenges in a more skillful way. Now, last week I was away on a retreat. That's something I do regularly for my self-care. I I go and volunteer at a retreat centre so I can have a week away with no technology, no phones, no emails, Um, because that's you know, the modern world itself is stressful enough without all all the other problems going on. And the person, well, two people actually who who were leading the retreat are like trauma practitioners. And and they were saying about, you know, it's like expanding that window of tolerance and, and perhaps, you know, looking at the point of view, say, of the Buddha when he came became enlightened the problems didn't go away but his window of tolerance was just blown right open and he was able to to face things head on and not be thrown by them and not be affected by them and you've probably heard the phrase that happiness is an inside job and it's true you know even but sometimes you know you know that on a intellectual level but we can still get get thrown and triggered by things that are beyond our control so for me it's it's been with all every challenge that I've been through especially in the last few years as I've become more experienced with meditation and reading about trauma is that coming back to the present moment and finding what's good in this moment and it doesn't have to be anything major it can just be that you're sitting as I am now in my living room on a comfortable sofa, I have a roof over my head, I have food, I have a nice cup of tea or something that anchors you in the present moment to remind you that actually in this moment life is okay. And one of the things that I um, have, have really put more importance on in the last few years especially when we went through lockdown and everything is making sure that I always have something to look forward to now not to the extent that you're so excited about this that it's taking you away from the present um, and not holding on to it too tightly because you know as we've seen when everything shut down plans can change you know but at least that it's kind of having a hope hope for the future and that was when I realized when I was going through like my worst time so early last year in 2023 I just felt completely hopeless I just couldn't see any um, hope anything for any reason that the future was going to be better and I was and and then in one until this little like little voice inside my head I was probably at my lowest point ever but you know you do deserve happiness and you do deserve to to be happy and to be loved just like everybody else and the same goes goes for you and 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 it's not selfish you know we we often especially if we're carers we're so used to putting ourselves last um that it can seem strange 
it's, it's strange in our culture anyway to put ourselves first. But sometimes that's necessary for, for our happiness. And it might be just, you know, putting aside some time each day for something that you enjoy, for something that you love and just building from there. So it doesn't have to be anything massive. So maybe, you know, book yourself like a haircut. I always, when I get my hair cut, I always book the next one because I usually forget otherwise. <laughs> um, but then that is, then I know I've got my next hair appointment to look forward to because I've been going to the same hairdresser for years and I have a good relationship with her and I always look, and I like the way she does my hair and I always get compliments on it. Not that I'm fishing for compliments now, <laughs> of course. So it, it's finding things every day that are good there's something even when things are around you seem to be bleak it's looking for those positive things in every day and that's not pretending that the other things aren't happening and one example I like to give was it's ne nearly 10 years ago now in 2014 my son's father my ex-husband died very suddenly unexpectedly he was only 51 and um, so it was a shock to all of us. And um, and then one day, I think it was like a few few days after he died, I think it was before we'd had the funeral, we received in that day three pieces of good news. And one of them was that I'd passed my coaching qualification. My middle son got his official acceptance letter into university. And uh, my youngest son passed his an exam that he needed to pass for his college course, and so, and and then it was just like this moment that okay, even in the time of this sadness, this grief, this shock, there's still happiness. And I think that that's as humans, it was like I was saying, it's expanding that window of tolerance, becoming a bigger container, so we can hold it all. You know, it's not black and white. It's not all good. It's not all bad. There's usually a mixture of both. Um, and some days, maybe it's the balance is tilted more one way than the other. But the more we're able to look for things that, that are good, that are positive, then that creates a better sense of well-being inside of us and maybe sometimes we need to create those um, situations so uh, as I said unfortunately I couldn't film on the beach today because it was just way too windy would have been way too noisy but that's something every day even if it's just for a few minutes I walk down to the beach and I look at the sea and that just doesn't cost anything and as soon as I see the sea so the view at the end of my road it just yeah it fills my heart and I feel better so even if I'm struggling in other ways, there, there's little things like that that I can do that help me to become happy and, and to en enjoy life and find good things in every day. Well, I, I, wish, I wish you well. I wish you happiness. And please do share in the comments below any tips that you have for enjoying life, even when, when things are difficult, because we can all we all have different um, views, different takes on life. And, and maybe there's something that you do that somebody else might not have thought of that would work for them. And sometimes we need to try different things until we're all different. Maybe you have, I like to have a cup of tea. I like to go and look at the sea, but for you, it might be something else. So, um, thank you again for watching please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will be posting a new vlog every week and i'm also um, recording my progress as i grow and monetize my youtube channel as i'm it's all part of rebuilding my life enjoying life again and becoming happy again um, at the age of 60 <laughs> nearly 61 so i will see you again very soon and I will leave you with another shot of the sea. Take care, go well, and lots of love. <laughs>